Okay, so, all right, so we're out here at the Lake County Republican Party, and we've got Tim Sullivan, who is running for re-election for county board. So, Tim, uh, again, why don't you introduce yourself, tell us a bit about your background and why people should vote for you. Well, thank you. It's a great opportunity today. I just spoke to, uh, to a group here in the Republican headquarters. I am seeking re-election to the Board of County Commissioners. I have a proven track record of conservative and Republican values and I need your vote going forward. When I came into office in, uh, almost eight years ago, the unemployment rate in Lake County was over 10 percent. We actually, because of our change in policies and going pro-business, uh, we lowered that to almost 3 percent. And now with the pandemic, things are back, back to that high rate again. So we it's a terrible time to change from one person of experience who has a track record to, to an unproven individual. So uh, I seek your vote to stay on the county commission. Um, we have lowered ad valorem taxes for the last four years to overcome some uh, a large tax increase that I voted against many years ago. And so I'm a known quality. I've got great background and experience. Um, I've, I've been a mayor, a city commissioner, I've been on the school board, and so I understand what Lakes County is about. I also understand that this is where my children and grandchildren live, and I want to make Lake County keep it great and keep it great for not just this generation, but the generations to come. And so that's why I'm seeking re-election to the Board of County Commissioners District. Okay, one last question is that uh, you, one of your opponents sent out a hit piece that I, I fully believe we're all wrong. Would you like to address that? Absolutely. Thank you for bringing that forward. Um, for instance, it says in that, that piece that I, I raised taxes $30 million or some phenomenal number like that. We have not raised taxes to do that. We've, we've experienced growth in Lake County, but only at about a 5% rate. For instance, 60% of that new revenue is because the value of your property went up. Um, Go ahead, you're fine. Only 40% of, of that is from new growth. And new growth, we have, we levy impact fees, and so that new growth re really pays for, it, for, for itself moving forward. The other thing I was questioned on during that piece was my residency. I've lived in resident in District 1 since I've been in office. And so, as a matter of fact, it's been proven many, many times over, um, but they continue to bring it up. And lastly, um, there was a piece about, because I sit on a board of directors of something called Consolidated Mining. I do not appreciate the fact that they're running that down. Consolidated Mining, uh, Consolidated Minerals, I should say, does not own a sand mine. They use sand, but they don't own any sand mines. And so they are, they have they have over 100 jobs, and it is an employee-owned com company, not a Fortune 100 company that brings jobs and happens to have their headquarters here in Leesburg, and I've been asked to be a part of that board of directors based on my financial and community experience. Okay, so one last time, who are you and what are you running for? I'm Tim Sullivan, County Commissioner, District 1, seeking re-election. Great, thanks. Two-year term, two-and-a-half-year term on the Lake County School Board, so, um, which was the most thankless job I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, so... My goal today is to answer any questions that you guys might have um, and gal. Um, Lake County is growing. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, my opponent has put out information saying that I've, I've levied 30 million more in taxes. Um, we actually lowered the millage rate. Um, that, that new money came in, came in from two, two sources. About 60% of why our, that money came up is 
is because the value of your home or your business right. has gone up. Okay, about thirty nine to forty percent is new business that's that's come in and, and come into our community. Um, when I came into office, and I'm going to relate that back. Um, when I came into office, the unemployment rate in Lake County was a little over 10 percent, and so I said, and and there's some other facts that I looked at. Uh, Seventy percent of the revenues that come into Lake County government are off the backs of homeowners. Okay, and 78 percent of those 70 were in the Save Our Homes program, which means their valuation could only go up about three percent a year. Um, so I said, for us to just expand public services, we got to find, we got to change that mix somewhat. So I went on a, a crusade with a, my, some of my fellow commissioners to bring in more business and industry to Lake County. Um, Kroger Center that we're bringing in, which is a $110 million facility um, that will provide 400 high paying jobs um, is an example of some of the fruits of our efforts. And I, I can't take credit for all that. That's not my, my point. But my point is, because we changed our philosophy about things, we've been able to start changing that balance. Um, as we, can. Um, we actually, during my period of time as a county commissioner, we actually got that unemployment rate down to as little as 3%. Okay. And so that's something that, um, I can be proud of my children and grandchildren all live here in Lake County. Uh, well, actually, I take that back. My youngest one, my oldest one, uh, lives in, uh, actually lives in Ocala, but works in Lake County. So, uh, works for Lockheed Martin. I have, let's see, my daughter recently got married about two years ago, um, and so where I, I went from one grandson to four. And uh, they're all great kids. Um, and, but, but they keep me busy. Uh, relating back to that grandfather's and father status is um, I know how important it is to have the community where people can grow up in that community, where they can build a career in that community and feel safe about, about doing that. And, you know, health care is very important. We have three hospital systems in Lake County um, that provide not only employment, but one of the reasons people want to move here is because we've got a great health care system. Um, so, you know, we have to encourage those kind of things moving forward. Uh, let's see, what else I want to talk about? Let me look at my brochure and tell you. What <laughs> uh, the, uh, I, I will tell you why I'm running for re-elect. Um, probably my original plan, and I don't know if I, if I ever expressed that to anybody, was to do two terms. And those two terms... Um, took me to where I am now. I'm 66 years old, um, but uh, this will be my last term, and I'll tell you why that is. Um, I'm very, let's see, very happily married to a, a wonderful woman who's put up with me for almost 38 years, and uh, I promised her we were going to retire at 60, so I'm six months, six years over that date, and uh, so she said 70 is it, and so. Uh, this will be my last term because if I get reelected, or when I get reelected, yes, then I'll, be 70. Um, I'll be 70 years old and I'm going to retire and try to spend more time with my grandchildren. That's young. You. Yeah, I know. I, well, yeah. heck, look, the president of the United States. How old yeah. Are you? Yeah. yeah, that's right. right? Um, and I could take that test that they put into <laughs> yeah. you know, right. uh, Let's see. And talk a little to us, if you don't mind, about the budget about the county budget, like how much it is and how you feel it's apportioned and uh, what we're going to need more money for and how you feel about <laughs> dividing it differently <laughs> if that's going to be necessary. Good, what, good yeah. idea. Good, good, good question. Well, most of our budget, or most of the dollars that come in, and I think I explained this earlier, go to the constitutional officers. Mm -hmm. The sheriff gets 60% of the, of the make up about 60% of the budget. And, uh, Supervisor of elections, the property appraiser, the clerk of the court, and the tax collector. And so most of the money goes there. Where we've been able to find efficiencies are, are in the 
county government part. Um, some of that has to do with technology. Some of it has to do, for instance, our building department. Um, you don't pay anything for the building department. It's an enterprise fund. So the fees that people pay to pull building permits and those kind of things all pays for the building department. And we've actually have a reserve in there to uh, Tell me what <laughs> we have a reserve in there so that when times get slow, um, then we we don't have to go back to the, the general fund. Um, the uh, we part of the budget, um, for instance, during my time we re we reinitiated or revamped the penny sales tax. Okay, that's an and, and it's actually an infrastructure sales tax. So that one extra penny that you pay, um, we actually split that three ways. Um, the school, the schools get one third of that penny. The, the municipalities get one third, and the county gets one third. Of the one third that the county gets, we divided that up uh, between public safety, um, quality of life, and those kind of issues. So we can adjust those going forward. Um, for instance. And infrastructure is another part of that, um, public works. So we really look, as a matter of fact, just Tuesday we cut a million dollars out of the proposed budget so that we could actually lower the ad valorem rate a little bit. So, a million dollars, wow. Yeah. yeah, the budget's about $450 million total. But that's every revenue source um, of everything. So, for instance, we get... We get state revenue sharing, which is the sales tax. Um, that's down about about one and a half, two million dollars in this year, in this upcoming budget that we know of. Um, I yeah. think some of this is a philosophy, but some of this just is through experience tells me that this won't be the bad budget year. That probably if the pandemic keeps going on and we don't return the economy up then that's going to be the most difficult yeah. um, time will be mm -hmm. the 20 next year. But yeah. not, this, not the budget we're working on now, but the budget we've worked on going For 2022. Forward. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, and that, some of that's based on my conversations with business people. Obviously, mm -hmm. I'm on the campaign trail. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, my, my biggest supporters are, are businesses. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I'm saying that. Um, and... And that's why I'm hearing from them. Yeah. Um, so we we look at the budget every year, um, but we also try to look at it over a five-year period. Mm -hmm. um, we watch things that are done. So, for instance, you'll see, like, if we didn't complete a capital project, that money will roll over. Oh. So it doesn't get spent in this year. It'll go into next year budget, but it'll show on revenue. So you can't, you know, and government, you show every penny that comes in. So, yeah. for instance, we have uh, about 10 million to 14 million in reserves. And that's for emergencies. And, um, I think I'll just say it. My, my opponent said that we, um, we let our bond rating go down. Um, well, when did we let our bond rating go down? Irma. It was after Hurricane Irma. Okay. Yes. So we spent $10 million to fix Hurricane uh, Irma issues. Um, we only get reimbursed for $7.5 million of that. So, and to be honest, we just got the last million or $2 million in this year. Yeah. That's like so. two, three years later. Right. Well, wow. if, and that, that's kind of a false narrative a little bit because... They did lower our rating, but our rating was already so good, it, it really didn't affect things. And two, even in their write-up, they said, you know, the conservative nature of Lake County government has been very good to them because they have so much room in administering their ad valorem tax that if in the event of an emergency, they have that to fall back on. So, not that we'd ever do that, hopefully. But, so, yes, ma'am. Um, I was just at a Tavares planning and zoning meeting. They're passing more development along Highway 19 going south by 561 where that Publix is. 
and that whole corridor is just a mess because the poor traffic and the, at least four of us including myself spoke about the lack of uh, action by the city of Tavares to fix the traffic patterns at, at the Dead River Road as well as down there by Publix in the 561 intersection. Uh, there are people being cut off. One people, one person you know, Don Kerr, was there. He had been cut off while he was towing a trailer and he ran over the curb and damaged the wheel on his trailer mm -hmm. because people are constantly trying to cut into the line trying to turn left going down south on 561. And the answer that we get, and again it was, is that the county and the state are refusing to do anything about the traffic and it's their roads. And uh, so then we got a statement. I got on a video where the head of the planning department basically came down to, well, we're going to risk expanding development and at some point in time there will be enough accidents that maybe the county and the city will do something. So then my question would be, would be why, uh, what can you do in the board, because I know you spent some money recently, 10 million I think, you bonded out, or you loaned, got loans right. for doing some traffic, uh, but it, it's not enough for that whole quarter, and then at the same time, just they had a, a uh, protest by taxpayers down there led by Danning Page, another watchdog, at City Hall about uh, overdevelopment and the lack of attention to traffic. Now, when is somebody going to provide the leadership <coughs> to fix the traffic problems first and to stop development approvals and permits until that is done? Um, this week. <laughs> um, okay, you, you got, there's two issues there. Um, one, State Road 19 is a state road. Right. So that's where all the funding comes from. But you have a lobbyist, and why can't you get those clowns to fix the intersection? Can I finish? Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and we need to, we do need at the state level to change the formula. And let me give you a great example of answer exactly what okay, you're Okay, that's about. what I want. Um, we, um, okay, you got, in the state road system you have uh, basic roads and then you you have strategic intermodal systems. Uh, strategic intermodal systems are where all the commercial traffic runs and uh, so 27 is a strategic intermodal system. The uh, turnpike 75, 441 and so that's a supposedly a different <coughs> lot of money. So when, when we uh, when they put in a new turnpike exchange in, yeah. in Mineola, traffic and so we had to connect many, that to Highway 27. Now we had already had 20 million dollars to put into that program, um, about a 30 million dollar project. So we went to the state legislature and said, "Hey, if you could give us 10 million dollars to connect these two strategic intermodals, then it wouldn't affect the normal." allotment of dollars that we get and that, that allotment of dollars from the state road department or state department of transportation is based on population so we're always going to kind of be behind the power curve on that. Um, well initially they, the legislators all promised us okay we can come up with a special allotment or whatever uh, 10 million dollars to pay for that um, when it got to the department of transportation they said oh yeah we'll, we'll do that but they took it out of our current allotment as opposed to a special a special appropriation from the state legislature. So that's one of the things that we're working on trying to do. Um, and because they're also moving some um, some dollars well, because highway uh, coming in out of Sumter County on 48 and then it turns into uh, where the turnpike is, where the village is going to be in, in Okahunka area. Um, 473, that's what that is. Um, that's going to be a strategic intermodal system, all the way to 75. So we got to maximize what we do with the state level by just who you're talking about, our lobbyists, um, and two, we've got to get our own legislators uh, in the mix to, to fight for us to get some of that done. 
because you're you're exactly right. That's not the only place we got that from. Um, the um, can you increase the impact fees then? <clears throat> I know it's a political hot potato, but they they got to do something. If the impact fees um, are actually pretty good, um, most of because but you can only use them on new construction. I'm told that. And they brought this up. They said you collect the impact fees from this intersection, but then you spend it elsewhere. You don't. They, there's no requirement you spend it in the area of where well, that's it's incorrect. generated. Okay. That's incorrect. Now, when I came into office, we did change. The impact. We had 20 impact. I think it was 20 impact fee areas. Right. So you could only spend that money in that. So I changed that to four. Because highways are a system of systems. So if you can only spend that little money in one little five mile area, you'll never get to the system of systems you need to take care of. So that's one of the things we've learned. Um, we do have a five year plan that we review each and every year, and the priorities get changed all the time. Um, so that's two areas that we're working on. There's another area. For instance, we, you, you're right, we just borrowed $10 million um, at 1.85%. So, the, talking about bonds earlier, if any of y'all can go get money at 1.85%, I'd like to see it done. But um, let me know because I'll get in on that game. So, um, but now uh, it's a debt that locks up some of your revenue well, when you're not, and your lower revenue now. But we came out of penny sales tax. So the penny sales tax had $2 million going to public. That's all right. That's good. Um, I'm going to get to that. Um, so, for instance, we're using that $10 million on current infrastructure because you can't use impact fees to fix current roads. Yeah. Um, we use a Wisconsin uh, road system that evaluates roads, 10 being a perfect road. One being a road that you got to totally replace, whatever, right? Like going to Europe. So, uh, <laughs> so at 3.4 percent, or when a when a road gets to three to four on that scale, if you don't fix it, then it goes below that, and you're not only just fixing, or repaving, you're totally tearing out the foundation, and what would cost you maybe seven hundred thousand dollars to do would cost you a million. So that's why we borrowed the ten million. So that that gets those current roads back up to standards and buys us a couple of years to do something. Yeah. Who is it that determines what type of road it is? Because it seems to me that Highway 19 now may have changed. If you look at the number of trucks on Highway 19, right, it's one of those whatever you call them. Strategic intermodal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because of the environmental impacts of Highway 19 going over that bridge and stuff, um, it, it was never planned to be a, a four-lane four road. And we've kind of held to that, but then municipalities make decisions that affect that, so we'll probably have to revisit that. We've just got so much. I mean, the new 7-Eleven is going to cause even more, I mean, two gas stations, right. Publix over here, the McDonald's, it's going to be more of a nightmare than it is now. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, we've got this, boy, I take it down to Groveland where we'll have the same conversation. Um, so, so it is tough and it's, it, it is difficult and that's why we have to have real serious planning. We have to look at all of our options um, and people don't want to talk about it, but um, you know, one of the things we haven't done is we have another nickel gas tax that we could we could let. I don't like taxes, but every county around us is already doing it. And so, if you go from Orange County to Lake County, um, what's the price of gas different? Well, Jim, do you have any control on Highway 19? No, not really. I didn't think so because it's a state. Because it's state. Yeah. Because it's state. But what about 561? 561. Because they're planning on narrowing 19 north and use just down to one lane. 
Sure. They can't Hang do north. that. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm told mm -hmm. because of that dangerous curve. Mean. It's um, not dangerous. Yes. Well, oh, it's my, my neighbor, or the lady that lives there on that curve, her house has been hit three times. Oh, wow. Oh, right. <laughs> what do you mean, the curve on the road? Mm -hmm. wow. Where, it grows, where you turn, get ready to turn on 452? Mm -hmm. So. Did I answer your question, Vance? Yeah, you to the did. best of my ability, I guess I answered it. Well, <clears throat> is there any jaw drop? Job owning you can do or something, I mean, prevent annexation. I know that this is another wish list of mine because the cities, you know, Tavares is just kind of like spanning and they sit there and they just keep approving these things, but they don't do anything. They don't allocate any money for roads. There's not a percent. It's like they just point the finger at you guys, at the state. And so. The question is, I guess maybe what you do is use you as a bully pulpit and explain these things and say you got to elect different city council people uh, that are going to recognize these issues rather than just keep voting for growth. Well, you need to, uh, the solution there may be to have the state pass a concurrency law in regards to roads. There you go. Okay. Um, for, and I, I'll give you an example. Um, I sit on the concurrency board for school system. Uh, we meet once a year, yeah. and uh, because of the, the us providing them with uh, impact fees, because we provide that one third of the penny sales tax, and then they have a capital outlay fund. They're they are actually keeping up with all the new schools that are required to come in um, without without. Right. Maybe you could explain what happens if they don't, well, how concurrency uh, gets into the, the whole scheme of things. Okay, so that's a good question. So, for instance, let's say a, a subdivision comes in and they're in a area where they're going to add um, 300 homes. And in those 300 homes, they know what, what the impact on the school system is going to be. So if, if there's not um, capacity in that school, then, um, then they have to pay for that capacity. So, and then, you know, it based, for instance, let's say the impact fees and everything else they pay are not going to make up that, that, then they have to make that money up. So, um, the developer. The developer does. Yeah, can you do anything? Uh, is it up to the cities to uh, maybe require that the. They don't seem to ever want to require the developer to pay for traffic improvements. Uh, they've avoided it. They had one developer that agreed to in Dead River Road but then fell out. And then they just sit there and they wait for you guys to pony up and they blame it on you. And my view is the city of Tavares is the one collecting the, all the property taxes on both sides of these roads. They should be responsible for maintaining those roads, regardless of who they belong to. Yep. Okay, don't disagree. Well, fact, so can you get that passed next week? <laughs> next week? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> hey, time to get moving on. We got all right. Ready. Anybody got any last-minute questions for me? Because I think I'm... Already run, overrun my time. And not you. I'm not talking. You're not oh, overrun. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's me. She's talking about. Yeah, I'm talking to. to, to <laughs> anybody else have any questions? We got you? here late, but we want to wish you luck. Well, yeah. thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, I'm probably going to just stay with and read everybody, anyways. Well, in in my particular race. Um, there's two red. I, I really, there are two red people. Um, we have one real Republican and one. So does a real Republican have a tattoo? Um, I got tattoos, but it's from uh, cancer treatments many years ago. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> and we we mentioned outside when we were walking by. It's kind of confusing. Just brought up a good point. Right. I think that uh, when when we have our yard signs or whatever, 
I think all of our signs should be red and all the Democrats blue. Just saying. <laughs> that's, that's only my. That's a good idea. Yeah. And, Actually, uh, I don't disagree with you, but when I ran the first time, um, my opponent already had a red sign, so I. Uh, that's why oh. I have blue well, we'll look there. And, and so, rather than change my signs, um, which would have cost me more money, my conservative nature said, okay, Sullivan is, because the whole point of a sign is to see Sullivan. Yeah. You know? yeah. And with the exception of you hardcore Republicans, most people don't pick up on that. <laughs> well, and in the primaries, often you'll have two Republicans, right. so yeah. they would both have red signs. Yeah. Yeah. And he's trying to distinguish himself from the other Republican well, running in the primary. Yeah, right. 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 Good point. Good point. But that's a actually if are we do you think that I should not be overly concerned about the mail in ballots? I got a bad feeling about that. Actually yeah. the way that's go the right. way it's been going about. I mean, I voted absentee in the military for a right. long time. Yeah. There's a big difference between absentee and, and mail-in ballots, and I'm not sure the general public knows. I think you're exactly right. My so, mom's in a nursing home. He works there. Oh, yeah. I and just... Go ahead. Can I bring that up? You go ahead. ahead. Yes. Yeah. I just stopped to... So this is an open forum. And you get yeah. the, okay, I, I still I'm retired, obviously, for a long time, but I, I still work a couple of days a week, and I work in a... Uh, uh, assisted living facility. Uh, I manage the activities for them, trying to keep them open. It's hard because they're locked down. Where at? Uh, I, I'd rather not say right okay. now because what I'm going to tell you might get back to our rules. Poker. <laughs> Poker. Okay. I've, I've worked my, my, in my daughter works know what you're going to say. Okay. It, it's, if I tell yeah. you, you'll know it. I know who it is. She okay. just told me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what uh, they came last week and uh, Who's they? Uh, well, the, the Board of Elections sent paperwork to my superior. Right. And she said, look, we, a lot of those people, my, my people that are in my area, starting in their early 80s and on up. Some of them are very alert, some of them not so much. Right. So normally, uh, someone from their family is POA, and they take care of stuff. Right. So right. now, because of the lockdown, they hand they show us these that they're going to mail. Not. Uh, not it, here's what we did. Right. We went down and done a survey of all my people that couldn't remember and, and right. contact their sons, daughters, whoever did your mom and dad. Right. Vote absentee last year. Most of them didn't. A couple of them did. So if they voted last year absentee, they're probably in good shape. Right. But they're the mail-in ballots. Not sure where they're coming from, or who some. Now they're going to have, and God bless all my people I work with, now they're going to have people that are working with me as CNAs or whoever help these people. I'm dead it's, set against that. It's, 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 Just for the fact that it could be influenced. Exactly. I think that that's, see what they're saying is family members can't come in. I get it. If you're not a doctor, you're not getting in there. We went to the window. Her mother's birthday, we had to go to her window, and I called from the cell phone so they could talk to her. But I just see a lot of space for fraud here, or misrepresentation, if you will. And I don't know that there's anything that can be done about it. Well, there is. Dr. Uh, Dr. Alan Hayes. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, he head. needs to have his staff go in and do it. With yeah, I will say. Um, <laughs> See, now a year ago, some of my people, they couldn't, what they do is it, it, they would take them in a the little wheelchair van down to the yard and they could vote in their building. Where they well, haven't been there for years. <clears throat> well, now they can't leave unless they go to a doctor. So, some of them last year, both parties came and had them vote on the property. But now, they're not letting anybody in. And it's not just my facility, it's state. I'm understanding. Right, right. And I said to my superior, I said, uh, is this just, I was curious, I said, is it just us? And why is it? Right. And she said, it's, if it's a nursing home, that's the way they're going to do it. And I am, there are a lot of people in nursing homes in Florida. And I think it could sway. 
I've worked in That's nursing, a big right and there. I'll guarantee you that most of the employees in those facilities are Democrats. Well, I was, you're exactly right. I know. Yeah. I could have said that. I've worked you're in right. nursing homes, too, and <coughs> activities department usually helped with um, filling out their mail-in ballots sure. if family couldn't do it because either they couldn't see There's a difference. Right. There's a big right. difference between the, the, the absentee ballot, though, because they sent that to them. They right. know that they're registered, right. whoever, Democrat, yeah. Republican. Right. But they just random mail. I, I'm dead set against dead that. Dead set, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, they true. really, I thought they were, I don't know, did the supervisor of elections send that out? Because, I, um, I almost, you have to request it because I know for you a fact. You have to request it. They sent them an email. You're right. To, I, because I, I said, well, where do? Because we got a crazy email. You know, I get <coughs> supposedly my my system's supposed to block up say, right. but my supervisor gets, and she said that the email came, and they went, you know, there's 128 people in the whole building. Right. They wanted a response at night. Yeah. Oh, uh -uh, so these people don't know what they had for breakfast. Give me a break. So I, I, should these family members be contacted? I don't know. I am a family member. I have a mother in the assisted living there. Okay. I am not allowed to bring the ballot back to her to have her sign the envelope. Really? I cannot go see her. So I have you know not seen her since about. February. I know exactly what you're talking about. See, I'm lucky. My and mom's I'm, there, and he can go in. Right. See her. I'm ready to get a job there. That's well, the only way you can get in. And some of the people have resorted that to see their mother, father, yeah. or whoever, yeah. or mm -hmm. husband, for that matter. It's, it's oh, terrible. It's a it's terrible, ridiculous. terrible situation. But I just heard they're one of a hundred in the whole state of Florida that doesn't have any COVID. But they're, these old people are dying of loneliness and neglect. Loneliness. Most yeah, here's, what's, here's what's happened to them. The, they're, they're feeding these people. and I, They're feeding that whole facility, even the apartments, in their rooms. Yeah. And oh, God yeah. bless those people yeah. that are doing that. Yeah. But she what's happened, and that some of these people, I used to drive the bus for these people, and I... Five years ago, I was taking them to Hard Rock. Now some of them can't remember what they did. I know their families. I know where they were raised. I know what yeah. they did. I've known these people for years. And I love them to death. And I just hate to see somebody, anybody, take advantage of these people. And in my book, that's exactly what's happening. And their hands are tied. You know, the people that work there with them. Right, Their right. hands are tied. Right. I get that. Right. It's well, corporate. as a county commissioner, do you have a thought on that? There must be a question in here somewhere. Yeah. I don't know the well, options. Is there anything? Else? I know that the absentee ballots are, are reviewed very, very well. Uh, I've actually sat on that board that does yeah. that review. So if the signature that they have on record is nothing like the signature that's on that form, then that 90% of the time gets, gets um, thrown out. Yeah. Oh, and um, that's why I yeah. need to take her to sign it because at 99, her writing right, right. is. And right. some, oh, some yeah, of that yeah. is you can change though because, for instance, if you do that, the supervisor elections now reaches out <coughs> to say, "Did you send this form?" Yeah. Um, you know. But my right. mother's signature, maybe when she. Absolutely, that's the biggest issue. Now she's 88, yeah. and her <coughs> signature thing. The close. point I was making is most, she of, these, even do most it. of these people. God bless them that are in this condition or right. situation, have a POA, <coughs> family member. I am. Yeah. So they're not even no, letting no. If you're not a doctor, and it's not, the state's involved in a lot of this. Yeah. They set mm -hmm. the guidelines because of the COVID madness, <coughs> you know, and I get it. That's yes, madness, is right. Yeah, Diane, a, you had a question. Well, I've been listening. And they are sending, if, if anybody, now you say you know these people, if they were here in Florida and were for residents, but if they were out of state, they are going to get a ballot from that other state. And if there's a Democrat in there, they will sign it and sure send they will. it in. I mean, this is one of their scams. I mean, this is a scam. Uh, and a lot of people that are registered here and come here, but they're Democrats, you bet it, Nickel, they will get another ballot from another state. <coughs> And some of them will send it in. And I got a Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, Commissioner. If you if you need to get hold of me, please, uh, you can do that through my yeah. uh, website. Website. I'm obviously not a technical genius. Being a general, I had guys that took yeah, care of it. Yeah, they took care of it.